after I finished my first 5K, I wanted to go faster. And my thought was, I'm scared. <laughs> I am scared to do anything different because what I had done up to that point felt really good. I just felt very timid and apprehensive to do things differently. Previously, I had met a running coach. She and I had talked and she was so encouraging. She was always just very receptive, which made me curious. And so when I got on her website one time, I saw that she does something called a visual gait analysis and a, like a biomechanical analysis. And then she provides this to you with suggestions on things to improve and also with functional movements that could improve those things. And so when I read that, I was like, hmm, maybe I'll get that one day. And then when I did my 5K and wanted to go faster, I was like, I really need to do something and maybe getting a running assessment is a great thing to do to make sure that I'm going forward very safely. And I had felt really good up until that point. I still feel good. I felt uncomfortable. I'm like, mm, this is not fun. I'm not breathing like I want to be breathing. And then I had to work on that and overcome that to where I breathed better. And then that discomfort, I had worked through it. There's a difference in like discomfort and pain. And even now, if I start feeling pain, I will back off of anything that I'm doing, period. This video, <laughs> we are going to talk about what a running assessment is. Back in October, when I got my running assessment, I actually vlogged it. Back to October and I'll see you when we get there. <laughs> Welcome to my channel, Wake Up Bright, where I share all the things that help me live each day a little brighter. I'm April Lauren, and I am so excited to not only be sharing my weight loss progress with you, but now my half marathon training. Subscribe to follow along. So I am on my way to meet with a run coach to have my running form assessed. I don't know how much of it I'll film, we'll see. But I know that we're gonna talk lots and lots about it. I'm so excited to do this. I've been wanting to do this for a while and it's time. <laughs> started off with a more biomechanical assessment. So what that looks like, just looking at more static and dynamic exercises um, for, for running specifically, I like to do the static one first and then kind of follow with some dynamic exercises, which look at flexors, strength and flexibility in different areas yeah. that can help us out any weaknesses or any things that we can work when on. I do, um, when I do Okay, gotcha. <laughs> but that's not what I was trying to do there. Okay. Awesome. I know you. Me. I'm from YouTube. Prof. <laughs> yes, April Lauren. <laughs> What's your name? Hi. Hi. This is Joe. Hi. What's your name? I'm Joe. Joe, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I always think maybe I'll see her one day. How would you get here? Two babies. Two babies. Well, one's a dog. You get the snacks. <laughs> a few people asked for guidance on how to find a running coach and to find a running coach you could go to running shoe stores or, or looking on meetup groups so joe created a running club and she has a meetup group for that there's so many different ways to find it joe however does have running wild collective and through her coaching program which is running wild collective she does virtual coaching and does virtual assessments as well so you could do the same running assessment essentially it would just be done wherever you are and she would guide you through what to do i will put her link down below i am not affiliated with joe she is not affiliated with me i am a paying client i love her passion for running and how detailed and caring she is with everything that she does. Hey, that was awesome. It was definitely a learning experience and I got to meet a subscriber and her kiddos. It was really fun and did hardly any running. I was kind of prepared to run. So she sent me this health and like this questionnaire sheet and then she just did the assessment and then I will get like recommendations and like an analysis of of what I'm doing and things. So, and then she went over quite a bit with me while we were out there. 
and um, it was really awesome. So I'm very, very happy that I did this. I'm excited, I'm excited to get the, the feedback. So I will share it with you when I do. Getting the running assessment was such a good experience. Immediately, she was able to point things out to me and also things that I was very insecure about. She was able to give me good feedback on how to manage those things, framework of, of what's good. And then having that framework of, oh, these feelings are quite normal for a new runner. And these feelings are quite normal for someone who is doing their first 5K. Having that framework was very, very helpful. And then she also gave me any immediate feedback that she could during that assessment. So it was really wonderful. And I share clips of my friend saying hello um, because I met her through YouTube and I really enjoyed the time I've been able to spend like hanging out with her. I think it's it's very interesting. I've met people in my, on my podcast, I had Tattoo Barbie. She is amazing and I felt like I already knew her when when she and I talked for the first time and it was just like such a connection. I think it's really cool that when you meet people that that's possible. Like, so for people who you've, you've never met, and I guess back in the olden times, <laughs> they used to do pen pals and things like that where people would would share stories and their life in that way. And I think that this is similar to that, except it's like an open letter almost. Um, but yeah, so all of this to say, if you ever see me, I would love for you to say hi, cause it um, makes my day. So this is not about that. This is about a running assessment and I think it might be quite long. So I'm gonna stop. So the very first thing that was part of my running assessment was like a medical disclosure um, form and then also just questionnaire. So I filled out all of these questions and sent that. And then she did the biomechanical and then she did the running gait analysis. And after she and I got together and recorded, and I just asked if I could record. If you're getting a running assessment, the person doing it should be willing to go over it with you. And that is something that Jo always provides with her running assessments. So while the back and forth is common, I don't know if necessarily recording it is common, but I did think it was really cool. As I went back through it, I, was reminded of some things that I've forgotten. So like some of the things we talked about were very, um, it's like they got pushed up and heightened in importance. And then some of the smaller things, um, they kind of faded. And so it was really cool to, to go through it in that way. Um, but the essentially what she did is send me the assessment and then I asked questions about the assessment. So it's a little all over the place, but I hope to provide a little structure and I hope that you enjoy listening. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk with Joe now. Would you explain like what you, what you ran me through? You started off with a more um, biomechanical assessment. So what that looks like um, is just looking at more static and dynamic exercises. So for this one specifically, um, for, for running specifically, I like to do the um, static one first um, and then kind of follow with some dynamic exercises, which look hip flexors looking at the flexibility in different areas help us that can help assess the weaknesses or anything that we can uh, work on after doing the the static and dynamic uh, biomechanical assessment we looked at the running form um, so that was all of these are, are video there's pictures what that running form looks like um, kind of specifics that I'm looking for, alignment of posture, hip angle, arm swing, angle oscillation, like movement of the head, foot strike pattern, a whole bunch of um, different things all together, what that looks like, and then kind of breaking it down to see if there's anything that can be adjusted or worked on. We are about to dive into some questions I asked about my running assessment with Joe, my running coach. So she sent me a full running assessment. It was a very detailed, it's multiple pages and in this back and forth that we had at the end of a podcast we recorded in October, she just answered the questions that I had specifically. And she had already answered some questions 
when I had the actual assessment. This running assessment will not be applicable to any other runner. It is an assessment of like my body and what I'm doing. And so while there may be similarities, every one of us is different. So I would, if you're interested in the idea of a running assessment or improving your specific form, I would definitely recommend a running assessment. So if you are interested in running, it is my opinion, a running assessment is the best way to proceed forward. Even if we start just walking, which I started barely moving and unable to walk, working out and then walking. And then after almost two years running slowly and in intervals. So we individually are responsible for our bodies and the things we choose to do. What do you mean by internal rotation? Is it from the hip that you're seeing the rotation or is it from the knee down? Yeah, from like the knee down. So your femur looks straight, right? Like it's kind of following there. And then when it comes to the knee, it's kind of internally ro rotated towards the middle part of your body. Yeah. Um, and I noticed it in other, yeah. Yeah, seeing if it if it is tightness, that's kind of, you know, the foam rolling is where that's that would be helpful. But kind of putting like pressure on those areas to help loosen up some of those muscles. saying glutes stay in starting position without downward direction is that a good thing or is that a bad thing so we would want to ideally see um like your your glutes kind of that pelvis it's hard to like show it without doing it <laughs> but your pelvis kind of like tucking right yeah um yeah so that that's what i meant by that okay. is like i we would like ideally to see that that shift I think I have this thing where like, I want there to be something wrong. And so I'm like, well, obviously something is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Cause then that gives no, me a valid no. reason to not push myself or before yeah. like I bend my knees more. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was the biggest piece I think in the, the running form analysis. And I think everything in the biomechanical stuff, right? Like there was very little for me to kind of elaborate on or anything. And the biggest piece on the running form was just that knee flexion. And you could really, I, that's why I included the right side view and the, the left side view, because typically it's just one view and that I can kind of pinpoint um, things if needed. But for, for you, I like specifically kind of put the right and left side, um, just so you can kind of see in the right side, there's a little bit more knee flexion that you see. And these are just screenshots of like the ones that I thought showed the best, if that makes sense, yeah. of what I was trying to communicate, because I saw the things that I pointed out throughout the video. Um, so that's why I pointed them out. But in the right, so you can see there's a little bit more knee flexion in there. And then compared to the left side, where it really looks like it's just kind of more stacked on each other. Um, so that was that was really the biggest piece. I think that would be that would be helpful is just increasing that knee flexion. When you say increase the forward lean of the upper body, is that you mm -hmm. also, the day of, you were saying that um, as I do some of the minery, you said that <laughs> things yeah. like that, and I might be making this up. Well, now <laughs> right, correct. So that's why the biomechanical assessment is done first, just so we're not pointing at things in the running form and they're like, fix this and it's superficially fixed. The groundwork isn't set for it, if that makes sense. So that's kind of how I see the, the biomechanical stuff working, the strength training specific to what is needed for you based off of that biomechanical. It's going to build groundwork for your running form to kind of come together, if that makes sense. So yeah, I said, do, I don't recommend immediately switching to a forward lead, but rather work on core and hamstrings. It becomes like a byproduct of that work. And I guess I'm not lifting as heavy as I got to, cause I think I got to lifting such a heavy weight, especially like with deadlifts where it like, it might be too much for me, <laughs> like <laughs> structurally. Um, like okay. my like wrist and like my elbows. Mm -hmm. I guess okay. my security cat is really what it comes down to. <laughs> I, yeah, I think I'm hearing a lot of like, um, like you kind of reach your, your like, you reach a good point and then it's like, oh, okay, I should, I should stay here. And then- Oh my of gosh, you're to me so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In a bad way at all. 
um, because <laughs> that we, is exactly we all do me. it. <laughs> and yeah, I what like I really want to say is like if you can lift 300 pounds go for more if you can do more <laughs> do it <laughs> do it thank you, you, know, you can the same thing with climbing I, it's really hard for me to do more than what i'm doing and um, I'll get to a point and I'm like, okay, I need to come down. And she's like, actually, you don't. And I'm like, I do, let me down. He's yeah. like, you had it. And then I get down and I'm like looking up and I'm like, yeah, you're absolutely right. I totally had it. All right. I had to do was like stand up. Yes. <laughs> That's it. So. Yes. Yeah. Right. I feel that so hard in climbing for sure. <laughs> um, but yes, um, go I'd say 100%. Like, I think that would be helpful if you're already flexible in that, in those areas. Don't be afraid to obviously in a safe way, push those, push those limits a little bit. Just all of the time, my knees aren't flexed or there are certain parts where they're flexed at a good rate. And then certain parts where they're not, I just like, so here, mm -hmm. like, are you saying there should be more bend in the knee when I land mm -hmm. and then here when I bring my knee up, it should be more flexed or more bent. Right. So this, so that knee is the opposite side. So, so that's going to be your, your left side. Um, so that knee is flexed well, but that's in the other part of like the running cycle, if that makes sense. So we're looking at the, like one side of it. So that's that knee right there, the left side, that's how it looks like in for the right side. Um, right side is a little bit more flexed um, throughout like your running, your running gait um, so to be hopeful. This one, the landing one needs mm -hmm. to be bent more or the one coming up needs to be bent more? <laughs> the, the one that's making contact. The auto belay, you know, I have yep. to let go and it like drops you a little bit before it catches. Right. That, yeah. especially the left side, it does that. So I wonder if that's why, like, I don't bend more, like, subconsciously. Mm -hmm. That you need to to hear me go <laughs> on and on about that. <laughs> no, that's great. I love. Um, it's very interesting to hear what the the thought process is behind, right? Like, I think there's a lot to learn behind. It's like, oh, maybe that's why I do this thing when I'm when I'm running. It's like, okay, I can definitely see that making sense. Well, I mean, and I wish, I wish that I were a type of person where you tell me this information and you make it so simple where it's like, okay, bend your knee more here. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna bend <laughs> here. But it's like my nature to like be annoying. <laughs> or no, no. <laughs> no, I think if anything, it's great to ask questions and to, I mean, that's that's in my trade in, in science, right? Like be skeptical, ask the questions, make sure that what, what you're doing or what you wanna know is being answered. Right pattern mm -hmm. you put hill strike and I noticed that in the pictures which is crazy mm -hmm. to me because I feel like I have gotten such a good I've gotten good at landing underneath you do a really good job about landing below your hips and not over striding so a lot of like the kind of big stigma with heel striking is because it's associated with over striding and what that means is that you're going past your hip when you land. Um, so that can cause a lot of impact on your knee, on your hips, and just kind of all the way up. Um, heel striking, especially like I think within the past like I'd say two to three years, is kind of getting like debunked a little bit where it's like there was this big push early on that like you need to land on the middle part of your foot. If you're not landing on the middle part of your foot, you're not running well <laughs> yeah. um and that you're hurting yourself right so two, the past two to three years a lot of i just have a come out and running experts all of that have come out now where heel striking isn't necessarily bad like you don't necessarily need to change that especially if you aren't experiencing any pain especially if like you're not hurting yourself but you want to make sure you're not doing when you're heel striking is over striding any like anything enough to point out be like hey shorten your stride to where you're not over striding in. What does your warm up look like before like you go on a run? What does that look like? I usually walk 
I usually walk my dogs first. So, and then I'll do um, high knees and I'll do almost like, it's just like a crazy slow motion. And the, mm -hmm. the A skips don't help, but the B skip, the, that motion of lifting my knee up and then extending mm -hmm. it out, it does something for my hips. Okay. Uh, so when you start running, what is that? I guess, do you listen to music <laughs> <laughs> or okay. podcast? But okay. rarely. I was wondering if there was a way to kind of help get you feeling, because it happens sometimes. It depends on the person. They won't really feel like they're running or like they've gotten into their like running pace or whatever until kind of later on in their run. Um, so a lot of the times what like I like to recommend is kind of starting your rituals that you usually do while you're running. When you kind of already have gotten into that groove, start doing them in your warm up. Like see if that gets you out of your head because it is it is like common in some runners to to think about like okay you know fix this fix this fix this um i guess like as long as it doesn't become kind of a hindrance or kind of a negative self-talk or negative like i have something wrong with me um then you know it that could also be for some runners, it might be helpful to have like that checklist of like, okay, this is what I'm doing, you know. Maybe that's why doing those things have been so helpful. Because even though I, when I talk about it, it might sound like a little frantic. Mm -hmm. When I'm doing it, it doesn't take a long time and it doesn't feel frantic. Are we breathing? No, actually you're not. Like you haven't been breathing yeah. at all this whole time. Like <laughs> all my breath. It's just right. like questions like it going over a little checklist but okay. I do when I am listening to like podcast and books on tape it's usually mm -hmm. a longer run and I usually mm -hmm. don't start until I'm in and I think that it does help me zone out because then I just get mm -hmm. into the story right uh, but I'm able to keep up with my own cadence and not mm -hmm. if I listen to music music makes me go harder and faster which can yes. be good right that's not mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah for sure I literally was just talking about this I think it was yesterday it was yesterday Tuesday no it was on Tuesday it was on run club and I was talking about how um I like pick and choose because during cross country high school college we don't listen to to music like you're not allowed to have music you know as you're as you're racing so it wasn't until after college that it even became like it's like okay I guess I'll put my music in now like you know I guess I'm allowed to <laughs> and so I'll, I'll listen to stuff um and it wasn't until training for, for the marathon that I was like I was like I can't listen to music because I end up going way too fast um than I need to and so music definitely like has that effect and I was like you know telling um or talking about it where I was like I have to like pick and choose my arsenal basically <laughs> of like what it is that I'm going to use to attack this run. Um, and if I want it to be more of like a long, slower run, it's going to be podcast. I haven't delved into audiobooks yet. Run books I've listened to have been audiobooks. Super and most cool. of them were when I were, I was just walking. I find it really mm -hmm. helpful. So like weight loss, like losing mm -hmm. a huge amount of weight mm -hmm. or whatever resonates and it just mm -hmm. helps. And right. That's kind of why I started. And then it kind of gets to where you hear so many people going mm -hmm. through the same fears and you're like, well, you know, maybe they're great and awesome, but like they feel these things too. So why not me? Right. Like, yeah, absolutely. I love that. Why not me? coming up this is the book that I will like open up just to kind of words of wisdom type of stuff um because she really goes into kind of like her mental train up for for running um and for how it's helped her and like in her life um but the way that she writes I think is super super relatable and she I don't know I just I just really liked her writing style um but I think like she has a lot of cool things to say about yeah, just train up and training of running. And I want to close this with Joe by asking you, Joe, what advice do you have for someone who wants to get started? Like encouragement, motivation. 
<laughs> um, encouragement or motivation? Um, I'm a very thoughtful person, so give me a minute. <laughs> Something that has been super helpful for me, Smires on Instagram. <laughs> Something that she talks about a lot is do things scared. But there's never really, at least I have not yet, gone into something new and not been scared you're you're wanting to start if you have that will um there's a way and it doesn't have to be the same way that everyone else does it but just lean into it do it scared um and find the people that are going to be supportive of what it is that you want to do that makes you happy i love that thanks so much joe really wish I would have been aware when I first started Googling the Couch to 5Ks that things like this existed. So I previously had gone to like a running shoe store and had something, it wasn't similar, but it was labeled the same thing. And it, it wasn't not helpful, but it wasn't this. So it wasn't like such detailed, like breakdown and analysis of like my body and the way I move and what I'm feeling and thinking while I'm moving. And so getting a running assessment done for me was so helpful. I encourage anyone who is thinking about maybe running in the future, having your form analyzed. And then maybe depending on what feedback you get there, maybe you should go to physical therapy or maybe you should do whatever is suggested in that process. So I just know for me, it was crazy helpful. And I wish when I first started that I would have gotten it. For me, it provided a layer of confidence on what I was doing. So I did it and I, you know, she says, y'all heard her say like, do it scared. I did the couch to 5K scared. Like I was very timid and apprehensive about so many different things. And so getting the running assessment, the confidence it provided me even after, was so good. I wish I had that in the beginning. And one of the first times I talked to Joe she talked about how people do intervals always. Like sometimes people run and they run through and I have gotten to where I try to do that more. I'm just very slow. So when I do intervals, I go faster. I can go faster and then I walk and it's like the walk I'm checking in with myself. I'm like, how do I feel? And maybe I don't always need to do that, but it, it helps me confidence wise. And so that's what I do. As far as our running assessment, whether you're gonna do casually, you're gonna run, or maybe one day you want to run, or maybe you've always enjoyed the idea of running, but it's painful and causes you stress. Like you don't enjoy it once you start because like your lungs are on fire and you stop. Um, I think getting something like a running assessment or even a running coach can be very helpful. So whatever you would like to do, always recommend checking with your medical professional, um, your doctor, before you start any new anything. But if you were wondering about a running assessment, what it is and is it helpful? And should someone who is a novice beginner with like no aspirations of ever really being competitive like against anyone but myself? I have no desire to be competitive against anyone but myself. I desire to improve every day, bit by bit, just a little bit and I feel like it was helpful for me and it was exactly what I needed. And I also feel if you would have talked to me about this in a different context, like if it wasn't Joe and she didn't, have, I didn't learn about it the way that I did, I may have been like, oh, that's for like, that's for serious runners, you know, that's for other people. <laughs> that's not for this type of people. And I hate that. I do that. I hate that so many of us do things like that where we sort of diminish ourselves and our needs based off of essentially insecurity and don't go through with things that we need. So that could look like running assessment or maybe it's getting a trainer at the gym or just going outside of your house and going for a small walk. Maybe you feel embarrassed to do that. And I just want to encourage you that whatever it is that you want to do, you are worth the struggle to get there. So if it's literally just going outside and going for a walk, you're worth struggling through that. You're worth pushing through the discomfort, your insecurities and starting. Like you're worth doing it now and you're worth continuing forward even when you mess up. We are worth the work. I love you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to follow along on my weight loss and my half marathon training processes. 
journeys. Okay. I'll see you next time.